<laughs> That's one big ham, ham glorious ham. Oh, I'm so excited to share with you our all-time favorite ham recipe. It is perfect for the holidays, whether you're making it for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Easter. And wait until you see what's in this glaze. It will make your mouth water. So let's get started. Start by lining a large roasting pan with foil. This will make cleanup much easier. Place the ham in the pan, cut side down. For a larger ham like this 11 and a half pounder, you wanna let it rest at room temperature for about two hours so that it bakes more evenly. We're using a bone-in, fully cooked, spiral sliced ham. The ham has been sitting covered at room temperature for about two hours. Now we can preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and make the glaze. Place a saucepan over medium heat and add all of the glaze ingredients. You'll need half a cup of apricot preserves, one fourth cup of honey, a quarter cup of Dijon mustard, and don't worry, you can hardly taste the Dijon in the final glaze, but it really amps up the flavor, so do not skip it. Also add one fourth cup of tightly packed brown sugar and three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Melt those together and bring it to a simmer, then continue cooking at a simmer for about one minute, whisking constantly. The combination of flavors here is amazing and goes so well with the ham. It's sure to become your new favorite glaze. After just a minute of simmering, your glaze is done, so take it off the heat. Now brush one third of your glaze all over the ham. Use a pastry brush to spread it evenly over the ham so it absorbs all that yummy flavor. Once you're done brushing on a third of your glaze, insert an oven safe meat thermometer into the deepest part of your ham. I'll make sure to link to our favorite meat thermometer in the description. Now cover tightly with foil to keep the ham from drying out in the oven. Transfer the pan to a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit on the rack in the lower third of the oven. Roast at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 11 minutes per pound. It took about two hours for an 11 and a half pound ham to heat up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember the ham is already cooked so we're just heating it up in this first step. Now increase the oven temperature to 425 degrees Fahrenheit and remove the ham from the oven. Remove the foil and brush on one third of the glaze. Brushing on the glaze in layers like this helps to form a sweet, sticky, amazing crust. Now return it to the oven and continue baking uncovered at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And one last time, take the ham out of the oven, brush on the remaining one third of the glaze, getting it all over into every crevice, and put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, or until the internal temperature reaches 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, and a beautiful brown crust has formed. Keep in mind the internal temperature will continue to rise once it's out of the oven, about five to 10 degrees to get it to the recommended 140 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. Now carefully transfer the ham to a serving dish, tent it with foil and let it rest about 15 to 20 minutes before slicing and serving. All right, we finally got it onto the platter. <laughs> and this is definitely a struggle. If you have any suggestions of how to do that easily, let me know, please, please, please. <laughs> All right, so when you're serving this, it's a great idea to use the pan drippings, almost like a sauce or, or a thin grain, but do not get rid of those pan drippings because they are so, so, so delicious. So I've got a measuring cup here with a sieve on top and I'm just gonna strain it through to catch any solid pieces. All right, and that sieve will catch any solids, so you'll have a beautiful and clean, silky juice. Oh, I love the drippings. I love the drippings, the best part. All right, and all that needs is a ladle. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go right into the tastes because I have been so patient and I cannot wait any longer. And 
Anyone that's ever cooked a ham knows that the very best part is this outer part right here because that's the part that's been soaking up all the pan juices and that luscious, luscious glaze. So that's what we're gonna try right now. We're gonna get our taste test on. And because it's already pre-sliced, it makes it so easy to serve. Your dinner guests can just get as much as they like. Oh my goodness, and it is so tender. Cannot wait. Just a little more. Oh, yum, look at that, it's just like fall apart tender. So delicious. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of the pan drippings on there, or maybe a lot of it. <laughs> really amps up the flavor. Oh, hoo -hoo. here we go. Such a treat, and so easy. Okay, look at that. I can hardly get it on my fork, it's so tender. <laughs> Love it, okay. Mmm, mmm, <laughs> mmm, mmm. Mm. This ham not only looks stunning on the holiday table, but wow, the flavors are incredible. You can really taste the apricot and honey and brown sugar coming through. I love how it glazes the outside and just penetrates that flavor all through the ham. Delicious, and seriously, do not skip. Do not skip the pan juices. This pairs so well with mashed potatoes. I like to put some of those drippings over the potatoes too. Oh, this is a show-stopping holiday dish. By the way, if you've never made a ham before or just wanna learn more about making it, check out the link to my blog post below. It's everything from how to buy a ham, how much ham do you need, what's the right cooking temperature, the different kinds of ham, because there are so many. Check out the link below. Hey, before you go, make sure you check out some of our all-time most popular holiday recipes that will wow your guests right over there and right down there. And make sure you click below to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you'll get notifications every time we post a new recipe. We'll see you in our next video.